What is going on, Colts Nation? And welcome back to another episode of Bring the Juice. You just got me tonight, and uh, we're going to help preview this Colts versus Vikings matchup here on Saturday, which is a very interesting uh, time for a Colts game. So the Colts will have technically another you know, prime time only them spot for another week. Colts come in four, eight, and one on the season. Colts have lost the last few matchups, and uh, it hasn't been great for the Colts this year. We all know if you follow this channel at all, you understand it hasn't been a great season for the Colts. And they face off against one of the better teams record wise in the NFL in the Minnesota Vikings. I mean, the Vikings come in. Although they, although they did not have a great uh, week last week, they got beat pretty good by the Detroit Lions. Vikings still first in the NFC North. They're ten and three uh, throughout this season. Ironically enough, the Vikings have been in a lot of games, a lot of very close games that they've won, and it's crazy that the Vikings have ten wins, but they actually have more points scored against them than points scored, which is just crazy. It's absolutely a bizarre stat. But the Vikings have uh, definitely know how to win games and win close games. Colts have not been able to do that this year. Uh, the Colts right now, um, you know, they're they're really uh, struggling in terms of scoring points. Colts right now, thirty first in the league in terms of scoring points, although their defense is right about the about in the middle at eighteenth. So, uh, right now, guys, you kind of look at this matchup and you look where Minnesota is strong. And they're really strong in their passing department. I mean, Kirk Cousins, uh, he's really sh you know taken a step up. I think this year uh, has looked really good. All all things considered, you know, thirty almost thirty four hundred yards, twenty touchdowns. I mean, he continues to look like a really solid quarterback. And you got to talk about Justin Jefferson. I mean, my goodness, Justin Jefferson on pace, you know, to 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 eclipse two thousand yards this season. That's how good he has been for the Minnesota Vikings, already has 1,500 yards receiving, and we still have four games to go. So that tells you anything about the kind of season Justin Jefferson is having. That should definitely speak volumes. But then you look at the Colts' passing defense, right? And actually, it's kind of a strength-on-strength strength matchup here, guys. The Colts are really good, actually, in terms of stopping the pass. They're number three right now in terms of pass defense, so it's going to be strength on strength. We'll see who emerges victorious. I got to think the Colts will do all they can uh, to match up Stephon Gilmore on Justin Jefferson. Bet, you know, real you know, elite against elite. I, I really think that's that's the route you have to go. I mean, you can never fully stop a player of Justin Jefferson's caliber, but you can at least try to limit him and slow him down to the best of your ability. And I think having a, an elite corner like Stephon Gilmore kind of shadowing him will definitely go a long way. So I'm hoping the Colts do something of that nature. Um, but we'll see. Justin Jefferson always seems to have his. So we'll see if the, what the Colts can do. Uh, beyond that, you know, the Vikings still have a pretty solid passing attack, all things considered. I mean, they still have, you know, guys like uh, you know, they still have guys like Adam Thielen. They, they obviously acquired TJ Hawkinson a few weeks ago uh, via trade with the Detroit Lions. So they still have some weapons outside of Justin Jefferson. And also they have two really good running backs in Dalvin Cook and Alexander Madison. So they have a really you know good unit in terms of receivers. You know, you look at Cook, he has 30 catches on the year. Madison has 13. So these guys get involved in the passing game as well. So it'll be very interesting to see who wins this matchup, right? It'll be very interesting because – if you remember a couple of years ago, Colts were able to get the best of Kirk Cousins and really make him look silly in that week two matchup in 2020. So, you know, obviously these teams are completely different than they were a couple of years ago. But the key for me, guys, is will the Colts be able to get pressure, you know, on Kirk Cousins and be able to disrupt him and make him feel uncomfortable in the pocket? If they're able to do that, I really feel confident in their ability to slow down this or at least limit this Vikings passing attack. You can never really slow down a unit that's one of the best in the NFL. But the Colts have been able to do that against some really good teams this year. You know, think Kansas City. Um, you know, you think the Eagles even. The Colts were able to to slow them down. And for three quarters, they were able to really slow down Dallas. So yeah, they have the ability 
to really make life hard for the Minnesota Vikings and kind of force them to do what they haven't really been able to do all year, and that's run the football. You know, despite having some really good uh, running backs, in my opinion, the Vikings are one of the worst teams in terms of running the football. You know, they come in right now, and maybe this is in part to how much they do pass it, but they come in right now as 27th in the NFL in terms of rushing. And, you know, yards and attempt isn't much better. They come in 22nd with only 4.1 yards per attempt. So I think the, the way the key of the Colts defense, you know, can slow down this Minnesota offense is if they force them to, to run it. You know, if they really do and they're able to get pressure on Kirk Cousins and kind of try to make them a little bit more one-dimensional, um, I have confidence they're going to be able to do a pretty good job on this Minnesota running game all day long. So that's my key for this Colts defense. Get pressure early and often. Do what you can to to limit Justin Jefferson and force some of these other players, you know, to beat you. So let's let's flip it over now, guys, to talking about this Minnesota defense versus Indianapolis offense. It's you know it's funny because you talk about strength on strength with Minnesota and Indy in terms of Minnesota's offense and Indy's defense. It's kind of you flip the script to the other way, and it's weakness on weakness. Minnesota comes into this game and they they've really struggled on defense this year. Uh, they come in right now, guys, as the thirty second team again in passing uh, passing yards allowed. They really struggle, uh, and you know they've they've really, really you know it's crazy how they're so so good and so dynamic in passing the football, but they can't stop anything to save their life in the pat terms of pass defense, um, and they're not that great also in terms of run defense. They're about middle of the pack, so this Minnesota defense is very can very much be had and can can very much be taken advantage of. But the problem is this Colts offense has been so inept this season. It's hard to see. Can this Colts offense take advantage of that, you know? Um, and I don't know if they can or not. Uh, let's be honest. The, the Colts come in, and their offensive stats, you look at them, and you just kind of turn the other way. You know, you plug your nose because it's, it's been bad, guys. It's been really bad this year for this Colts team. I mean, they come in passing yards. They don't look too bad, right? They come in about 19th. Not good, but not horrendous. But their net yards of attempt are just awful they have you know they have more interceptions thrown uh than touchdowns this year right they have more interceptions thrown than touchdowns and their defense for as good as they've been they've allowed more passing touchdowns than this Colts offense has scored this entire season so they come in and this offense is just so bad you know like I mentioned earlier they are the 31st team in terms of scoring this year it rarely have they scored over 20 points this entire year. And that's probably, uh, it's going to be interesting to, to see who takes advantage because, you know, Minnesota's allowing 313 points, which is 24th in the league in points allowed. So weakness on weakness, guys, we'll see what happens here. I will say this, even though the Colts come into this game and, and their offense in terms of running the football has been bad this year, they're 26 in the NFL. They do still have Jonathan Taylor at the end of the day. Taylor can get going any single game, and he's shown flashes still this year that he can be that kind of player. He's had some costly turnovers this year that have really hurt this team, but I think the Colts could definitely take advantage with setting up the run, setting up the play action with Jonathan Taylor running the football effectively, and could really you know start to you know take advantage of this this really poor Minnesota secondary. So. Um, we'll see what happens here, guys, in this matchup. It's going to be really interesting to see you know, who takes advantage, who wins the strength on strength, and also who wins the weakness on weakness. It's kind of like a, the Colts actually match up pretty well in this game, all things considered, I feel like. So can they take advantage or do they continue with more of the same? I don't know, guys. I don't know what's going to happen in this game. At this point, I don't really trust this Colts team. You know, Even if this game was close to pull out a victory, like I said earlier, Minnesota has been really good in that department. The Colts have been really bad in that department for the majority of the time. Um, so I, I do think I still have to favor Minnesota in this game. While I do think the Colts can definitely make things interesting, I think Minnesota still, you know, they 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 have at least proven, you know, while you you can debate are they frauds, are they not frauds, they've at least proven, in my opinion, they know how to win football games. The Indianapolis Colts have not proven that they know how to do that this year. So I have to take the Vikings in this game. I do think it might be a decently high-scoring game, actually, um, which is crazy saying that about this Colts offense, I know. So decently high for them is over 20 points. So I'm going to say 23 
to 27. I'm going to give Minnesota the victory here. And I think the Colts offense probably spots them, you know, maybe a, a you know, some good field position for their offense. I don't think the defense is going to fully let up 27. I just feel like this, like we saw in the fourth quarter of the Cowboys game, this offense just implodes. They turn the ball over. That's what that's what happened this entire year. And I feel like they're going to do more of the same in this matchup. So I got the Vikings winning this game, guys, but you know, maybe the Colts could pull off a surprise victory here. And uh, But also I think about it like this. Minnesota got it flat out embarrassed against the Detroit Lions. You know, Detroit's on their heels now. They're breathing down their neck. So I think the Vikings realize this is a must-win game. If they want to continue to secure and get a stranglehold on this NFC North, they have to win this game. They can't afford to fall into a trap game. I feel like Minnesota's a good enough football team where they're not going to let that happen. It seems like Minnesota's a team that finds ways to win. It's not always pretty. The Colts find ways to lose. And I think that's going to ultimately be the difference in this game. So my score prediction, 27 Minnesota. And I believe it's a 23 Indianapolis, so four-point game there. I do think it'll keep close, but I think in the fourth quarter, Minnesota will pull away in this matchup, and the Colts just simply won't be able to answer. So, guys, that's a little bit of my game preview for Colts versus Vikings. Like I said, um, you know, I had I had a guest lined up, and you know, we just it didn't really work out. There were some connection issues, so weren't able to do it, um, which is a bummer. But you know, it is what it is. So. I just wanted to give you guys a quick preview here of Colts versus Vikings on Saturday, which is weird. I, I still, I always want to say Sunday, but it's on Saturday. Uh, be sure to stay with us, guys. We're going to be live streaming that game, having everything for this game. Um, so be sure to stay with the channel. And if you haven't yet, subscribe, hit the like button. I'd really appreciate it. It definitely helps us out. You guys have been so good to us this year. Uh, I posted earlier, uh, I believe, well, when, when this is released, I posted yesterday uh, kind of a year-end review kind of thing for the YouTube channel. You know, YouTube sends it out to all the content creators and just amazed, just absolutely blown away, guys, by how much you guys have supported us this year, by how awesome, you know, the channel. Every year, I'm kind of like, there's no way the channel can get better than what it is. And every year, you guys surprise me. So thank you guys so much. We really appreciate all the support. Let me know your thoughts in this game. Any matchups I might have missed in this game that you think will be crucial. I think I, talk, I talked about most of them, if not all of them, that came to my mind. But let me know, guys, if I missed something. And let me know your thoughts on this game in the comments below. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. Really appreciate all your support. As I said before, thank you for over 15,000 subscribers. You guys are insane. We love you, Colts Nation. And uh, it's going to be an interesting couple months here after the season, you know, wraps up here in, in December, January. So thanks guys so much. And as always, go Colts.